Today we're going to be talking about the South African Krugerrand. So I've picked up a couple of these recently uh, for a few different reasons which we'll go over. We're going to talk about why they are such a good coin, some of the pros and potentially some of the cons and we'll mix in a little bit of history as well. So I don't really have any ties to South Africa itself, never actually been to the country, I don't really know anyone closely from there. And yeah, to be honest, I don't really know what the draw is to the Krugerrand and South African coinage. Other than I just quite like the design, you know, it's something just a bit different. And perhaps it's uh, something to do with the history behind it all, you know. So I have in here somewhere, there it is, uh, a South African crown. And you can see here we obviously have the Springbok. I know in a previous Krugerrand video I joked about this uh, deer and uh, some people didn't like that got a little bit upset but the Krugerrand is like the original bullion one ounce coin and uh, yeah there was obviously old coins in the past that were you know used in circulation but the Krugerrand was minted for you know a bullion device if you like so the first Krugerrands began to be minted in 1967 and you know you might recognize that date and uh, that kind of period in history you know not long after the second world war and we had things like the Bretton Woods agreement the gold standard etc and uh, you might know some of the history behind that but basically people around the world were beginning to think about storing gold and the Krugerrand came out with you know this uh, product that would satisfy those needs so in 1967 they began to mint them and they are still minted you know present day the design has changed slightly over the years but it's pretty much remained consistent so over time you know different bullion coins have been produced as well and seeing the success of the Krugerrand a lot of other mints came out with their own versions so you've got obviously the maples you've got the American Eagles and uh, you know then the Britannias and so on so yeah, we can see here it's obviously a 22 karat coin it is that little bit more coppery color than the four nines fine um, this is obviously a red dragon of wales queen's beast and here we have uh, one of the fan favorites the gold buffalo so let me just get those up on here and you can see if i can get the light in the right place let me just drop the dragon you can see the difference in color there so obviously a little bit more coppery as you would expect being uh, a 22 karat coin compared to the gold of the fan favorite buffalo so maybe it's something with animal coins I'm not sure you know you've got eagles you've got lions dragons etc there's a few coins that don't you know the maple leaf obviously is not an animal but uh, just an interesting uh, point to note so like I said there's a few different design changes on most of them though the similarity you've got the date either side of the springbok there and uh, on the back we have uh, Mr. Paul Kruger, Uncle uh, Uncle Paul. Let's have a have a look at him. So yeah, this has been pretty much the same, and uh, there's no data or anything on the back. It is just South Africa and South Africa up there. And also, if you notice on this side, you notice it says F Y N G O U D. It's not a, a misprint or a typo. That's just what it says. You know the fine gold here on the right that is how it translates so you know if you're looking at your own crew grand and thinking whoa hang on they're not even spelt gold right don't worry it is meant to be like that so here's another one which is uh, one i've had in the stack for a while uh, this one actually that i picked up recently um, when i bought it it was a very low premium which is one of the advantages of the crew grand you know it is designed to be a very low premium coin they're nice and durable and uh, yeah this is a particularly good example although it's still a bullion coin you know some of them do tend to get marked up and uh, maybe maybe just handled a bit more you know rough and uh, things like that i have got the glove on this whoops this hand it's not really to uh, you know protect the coins or in capsules etc just to uh, hide my mucky hands for today so in terms of mintages the south african krugerrand was minted in like the tens of thousands early on initially and then the demand obviously built up and we saw them in the millions so there is literally millions and millions of these that have been minted i guess over time some might be melted and scrapped but 
you know, they were into the into the millions of coins minted. There are also proof coins, and then there's some special anniversary years, like in 2017, marking 50 years of the Krugerrand. And uh, yeah, you also have you know a few other little bits and pieces here and there. There is some fractional sizes, and then there are some, you know, I'd say more novelty sizes, like uh, very very small Krugerrands, but. The main fractional sizes you will see are the quarter, the half, and the tenth ounce. So, you know, there are there are those smaller sizes, but the Krugerrand, the, the one ounce, is like the, you know, the original, if you like. So, yeah, I'm not sure what it is to the draw uh, that draws me to them. I do like the colour, and I believe the more recent years, they are slightly coppery looking, whether that's to do with how the coin is aged somehow, maybe like silver tones maybe the copper has done something in the coin or something like that i'm not too sure or maybe they have just changed something slightly so in terms of the coin you know how does it fare up what are the advantages what are the disadvantages it is a great low premium coin you know most places around the world this does tend to carry a very low premium so when you buy it you're buying closer to the spot price so let's say you're going to spend ten thousand of your currency you would be getting more gold for your money compared to something like the Buffalo or Queen's Beast or Britannia's and things like that. Um, that also means that on the way out, you would probably expect to get lower premium back. Um, at the moment, most dealers in the UK are paying the same for a Krugrand as they would for a Britannia. Some of them would pay a few pounds more for a Queen's Beast, like literally a few pounds. Um, but the Buffalo, you know, the Krugrand doesn't really matter. The Buffalo would be selling at a higher premium, but when the dealers are buying it back, they're not going to give you any more than a Krugerrand. So if you like the Buffalo, obviously, you know, you, you like the Buffalo. And if you don't like the Krugerrand, you don't like the Krugerrand, then uh, maybe if you're just buying a couple for a collection, you are going to go for the Buffalo. If you just want to stack, you know, some, some good weight and you're not too worried about what particular coin, the Krugerrand is a great, highly liquid option. So very, very popular and, like I say, recognised around the world with it being around, you know, for over 50 years now. One of the disadvantages, because it is such a popular coin, there are obviously fakes in circulation that have been made, you know. And some people would say that it's a quite a simple design and, and hard to sort of, not that hard to replicate. If you look at the modern Britannias, they have a lot more security features. You know, it's a lot more of a complicated coin to perhaps copy and for that reason some people are a bit nervous about buying Krugerrands and they would just rather buy you know these modern Britannias and things like that. So different options there. Uh, another potential disadvantage with it being 22 carat in some countries that is treated differently. So for example in Australia, Canada they have a GST, a sales tax on non-pure coins. So on this 22 carat 917 fine they would have a sales tax, whereas a buffalo, a kangaroo, a Britannia, etc. would not. So, you know, that would be an advantage there. Uh, maybe on the second hand market, that doesn't make too much odds. But uh, yeah, there is, you know, a definite preference, I notice, on the second hand market in the UK for people who want to buy Britannia's and capital gains tax exempt coins, which I think will probably stand and, and even maybe get a bit more. Uh, you know, a bit more keen on that whilst the capital gains tax rules are changing a little bit. It does mean if you can get capital gains tax exempt coins, it's just one less worry. Those rules could change though. So, you know, maybe in the future it won't matter as much. Um, and then for some smaller buyers, you know, if you're only going to be buying a few ounces, maybe it doesn't really matter that you've, you know, you're not going to sort of exceed those limits just on um, selling a few gold coins. So, you know, a few options there, a few things to consider. And I do just like the South African coins, really. I don't know why. Obviously, you'll notice George on the back of this one. Um, some of the other South African coinage to look out for. There is the um, Pond, which is similar denomination to a sovereign, gold sovereign. And there is also the Rand. So there was a two Rand, a one Rand, which is like a sovereign and a half sovereign uh, size. Um, they didn't have Mr. Kruger on the back, but they did have, uh, you know, a version of the Springbok on the front um, and the pond was a different design altogether so I haven't ever actually owned one of those but uh, yeah I do like them they do look like a nice coin so 
if you're looking at the colour of these compared to the modern Britannias, they don't look as, uh, sorry, the modern Sovereigns, they don't look as coppery. They do look a nicer colour in my opinion, but you can see, you know, it does look different to the Buffalo and some of the other 495 gold coins. So Cash and Coins did another video on his crew grand recently, and uh, there were some other points in there that I didn't include here. So perhaps go and check that out if you're interested in the history of the crew grands and a bit more detail. Hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you soon.